So welcome to the Demography Today lecture series, uh, sponsored by the BBVA uh, Foundation and co-organized by the Spanish National Research Council and the Lompoc Project. And uh, apologies first for the late uh, starting of this uh, lecture, but it's, uh, it was due to the late arrival <laughs> of, the, of the flight and that it was bringing Marco Bereski from uh, Florence, uh, so thanks to the, to the airline. Um, so Marco Bereski is a professor of economic uh, science, statistics and demography at the University of Sassari in Italy. Uh, he, uh, population history is his main research field. He has also worked on contemporary issues, in particular in the last few years. He has studied Italian fertility and health inequalities in the population. His research conducted at the macro and micro level focused on three main themes, the complex interplay of family and economic context on individual demographic behaviors, the determinants of early childhood mortality, and individual and family reactions and adjustments to demographic stress. He has been involved in, in large projects across Europe, in the world. Uh, he has been part of the Eurasian uh, uh, large uh, project that he was carried uh, uh, some years ago and is still getting publications out. And he's as well part of our Lompop project. He's uh, part of the, the Italian branch of uh, Lompop. So thank you very much for coming uh, to Madrid to give this lecture. As usual, we have around 45 minutes or to one hour uh, lecture, and then we open the floor for questions. Okay. So welcome. It's a little different, the title, because uh, it's not the last one version. But anyway, uh, maybe it's more correct, this title, because I'm going to speak about the shape of uh, hazard function or mortality. Function. And especially I, what I want to point out is some that we call critical points of the human hazard function. Uh, these are the first, really the first result of research that Gian Battista Salinari, Danilo Del Pino and myself are doing at our department, the Department of Economic and Business at the University of Sassari. Uh, uh, what is, is strange that, if, especially for demographer and mathematicians, mathematicians or statistics, that normally we think that to know all on the function of a mortality function and also to know all about is a, a mathematical function. Instead, we, uh, if you ask, it is possible to, to design just one function to describe all or the human hazard function. No, at this point, nobody knows how is if there is just one function. What we know really is more, a lot of research, especially right in this last quarter of a century, concerned the last part of the function, I mean, the longevity. And for, for it's easier to think about the research of Professor Ropel, Canisto, and all the the, the, um, the Mass Planck Institute, or we know a lot, really a lot, maybe too much, on the first age of life. In fact, we, we, at the end, we introduce a lot of concept, still birth, so we speak of birth before, before death before birth, then we speak about the, the neonatal mortality, prenatal mortality, and the post-neonatal mortality. But at the end, instead we know little on what, and we, we know little or less uh, on the part of the function that move from uh, the, we can say, adolescent, the age two, three, two, fifty. And uh, I'm going to, to present some result on this. But before to speak on these special critical points, I just want to, to see with you some simple data concern, concern uh, the change in uh, mortality that we observe in Spain. Of course, I chose Spain because we are in Spain. And, and uh, this is what to describe. It describes the mortality rates, rates in Spain from the first uh, one of the first tables for Spain, that is 1910, to one of the last 2010. And it's evident the decline of mortality and this typical movement from top to the 
Barton to the burden of mortality. And the decline is very strong in the period between the two world wars, but also is, is, is strong, I mean, the relative decline, because this is a log representation, but in the last period, I mean, in the last quarter of a century, the distance between the red line that represent the, M, the mortality rate in the 19, 1985 and the, the green la, uh, line that represent the mortality rates for the 2010 is evident. The, this. the same we can observe for male is not so different. Maybe we, we can immediately get the idea that the movement or the reduction is, uh, is not so large that uh, is less, is more continued. Then another point that is important for some uh, uh, problems that concern the past. Uh, if you look, uh, you can see in the first, uh, um, in the first table in, in sort of erratic uh, movement in the MHS in the value of mortality rates. This movement, erratic movement, reflects the limits of the quality of the data. And the, the limits of the quality of the data, data uh, especially the, uh, due to the, the famous effect of age heaping effect. And uh, so we have to take attention to the problem of quality of the data. Just to give an idea of the difference between male and female, we can immediately observe that the decline was of mortality was uh, more evident for female and than, female, uh, than male. And the, what we know, and all of we, we know that the decline is incredible for the first age. Uh, I mean, the, the, this is infant mortality rate that for Spain moved from a level that, that was at the beginning of the 19th century, about 200 poor. Uh, 1,000 of birth right now is almost nothing. It is three, four point per, uh, per 1,000 of birth. And again, we can observe that the level of mortality is lower for female than male. Uh, even if we can observe that the gap seems to go to be reduced in the last, uh, in the in these last 25, 30 years. Of course, the decline of infant mortality uh, uh, and the, the general decline of all the mortality rates uh, have as a result an incredible uh, increase of the synthesis of what is the, the, the synthetic measure of mortality that is a life expectancy at the birth that in some more than one center move from a level that was that were around the 40 uh, to level that right now are double, I mean 80 for male, 85 for female. The level of the life expectancy is higher for female than, than male. It's, it's evident there is a sort of a, a, an erratic fundament, but this is the consequence because I'm using the data, uh, temporal data, and this concern the increase of uh, um, uh, uh, mortality for male during the civil uh, war, the uh, civil war, and the Second World War. As a consequence of the increase of uh, life expectancy, we have another famous uh, phenomenon that is the rectangularization of uh, uh, survivors. That almost a lot of people right now reach age that in the past was almost impossible. I mean, almost the 90% of the people reach age 50 and 60, and then so it means that little by little uh, are going to disappear what we uh, the uh, the death before age 50 and 60. This is evident, especially for for female, as you can appreciate also from. The, the phenomenon of rectangularization is more evident for female than male. Uh, the consequences on the curve of depth are 
uh, as evidence in this two graph where I compare the depth in the table in the 1910 with the depth in the table 2010. The, and we can observe at first things that the, the compl or almost the complete di disappearance of the depth at age zero and also at uh, age one, uh, two. And, and the concentration of depth in the last part of, uh, of, um, of the age. And this is more prominent again for female than male. What is interesting, and this I'm really, is one of the suggestions that we receive when we start this uh, kind of research is a, an important paper that uh, Les is presented at the first uh, international demographic conference held in Paris, if I'm not wrong. Yes, in Paris at 1878. Uh, Les is in this paper, he presented for the first time the concept of a normal length of the life, what right now we call it, I think so also in Spain, the Lessis point, the concept of a Lessis point. And moreover, Lessis introduced an important uh, classification of a depth. The part that they call normal depth, that he say that this, uh, they, this kind of depth represent the real depth. Then he introduced another part he called the premature child depth that is in something big dot, and the other that he called premature uh, adult, a young adult, a adult death. And he guessed, he did a pronostic, a sort of a pronostic, he said, in the future, maybe we will observe just the normal death. And it's incredible how one century and a half ago, he saw what is going, it's present in our population. Then he discussed a lot also about the shape of a mortality function. In fact, this paper uh, um, introduced a lot, uh, an important debate between the, the most important and relevant uh, the scholars of, life, of human life uh, at that time. The, this link between the uh, idea of, uh, of uh, Lexis and the present is, I think, evident in this graph where I cut just the first age just to, to have a better, a, a better representation of the curve. And you can see that almost the death, are, the, the death right now recall in some way the normal curve of, uh, of, uh, of, um, of lessis. Then also we see that another thing is so that the point of lessis, the normal age at the depth, is move from uh, level around the 70 to level that right now for female is right 90 and for male is 85. In the first part, I mean, until age uh, years 40, the age at lessis, point at less is always 70, but this is the consequence of the, the, low, the low quality of data and the aging effect. Instead, after when the, the, the age at that was calculated directly with, uh, as a difference between the date of birth and date of death, immediately we see this incredible increase. Another important thing is at that, in the first, in, the, in that year, the classical measure of that normally we use the life expectancy was 40. And at the point of less, it was 70 or maybe 72, 73. Now, the distance between the two measures, I mean, the average, the, uh, average and the, the, nor, the normal a, a age is almost the same. So this process that uh, Less is introduced, so is almost, all, 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 almost complete. Another point that, uh, that Lexis uh, focused in that article was something on the minimum, or, or better, when the mortality is the minimum, at which age. And on this topic, start uh, for the first time an interesting uh, debate between some relevant uh, 
uh, scores are like uh, uh, different kind of scores. Pareto, he wrote another interesting paper. Bertillon, another important paper. One important Italian mathematician, Perozzo, that was uh, the, the, uh, the scholar that, uh, that built the first life table for Italy. And then for me, one that uh, the, the demographer that I prefer, the Italian demographer, the, the, a demographer that is not so well known in uh, abroad because he wrote a lot of paper in Italian is uh, Rodolfo Benini that introduced a, a new theory on the quality of a life. And he, he focuses his attention especially on this minimum, where it is the minimum of age. And he observed for the first time, in, uh, together with Bertillon, that there is a minimum, then some increase of mortality, then a little decline of mortality, and so on. And what we can see, uh, uh, in these two graphs, again, that uh, represent the mortality rates without, the, I didn't put the uh, mortality rates at the age zero, that the minimum in the past, well, in the past the population was around 30 years for female, for male, and 11 years for, for uh, female. Right now is around, uh, again, eight for male and seventh for, for uh, female. What happened in Spain regarding the minimum? This is the, the observed minimum in all the, the observed value of M is. This age at the global minimum that move for female from age 11 to age that are close to eight, something like that. For male from age that move from 12 and to age that right now are nine and eight. Now uh, I'm introducing minimum, why? Because this was the initial uh, goals of our research, to study the change in the minimum and to try to investigate why the mortality is so low in this piece of life. Then when we started to do that, we immediately uh, appreciate, uh, note a strange fact that it is very difficult to use the observed data because the observed data for the past are strongly influenced by the quality of the data. In fact, the minimum if you observe is 11 because 11 is an age that attracts less data instead of zero or, or, or two or, or four. And for the recent period, we we uh, have another problem that the level of mortality is so low, is incredibly low, that you have an erratic fluctuation in the minimum. Sometimes you have the minimum at age 11, the one year later uh, age eight, and so on, because the number of deaths is almost erratic, especially in a country with uh, a not so large population. Also in Italy, for Italy, for example, that has a population of more than 60 million, the number of death at, wow, at, at, at age, at age uh, in the quinquennial class of age five to 10, we observe less than 20, 200 deaths. So it's, you have a lot of erratic uh, fluctuation. So we start to find, to discuss how to try to measure the right age at the global minimum. We observe that to measure a minimum, and so if you have a minimum, you have also some inflection point. You need to do some derivation from a mathematical point of view. But to do derivation, you need to have a function. Otherwise, you cannot uh, apply the, all the theory of, of uh, derivation. So uh, we started to, to study some function. But uh, if you go in the literature, you don't find, uh, like in the, the last age, some uh, typical function uh, like uh, Mackenham or other Gompers or something like that. For this part of life, it's difficult to, to have just a function. And then, so we develop uh, some methods 
complicated method, thanks to, especially to Danilo Delpini that, and Jean Battista, that Danilo Delpini he, he got a degree in physician and is in mathematics. He helped a lot to us to individuate a criteria, mathematical criteria, to obtain some, throughout some smoothing theory to measure this, uh, uh, this part of the mortality function. Because our goal is, was to, to find the minima, the inflection point, the maximum, the other relative minimum, and the other uh, point. And our goal at the end, we move from the, idea, the initial idea that was just to study the global minimum to try to classify the different shapes of the human hazard function and to estimate the age when critical points occur. So we change the goal. Because we observe that it, it, is, it, it was more interesting to study this change in the shape. So we derive a complicated method that right now I don't, I'm not going to present it because I'm honest. Also for me, it's very difficult to describe what we did in simple word. We find a smoothing method that is a recursive method with, so with a lot of bootstrap until we didn't find what we, from a statistical point of view, we. Uh, we decided that it was technical, I mean, statistical significance, this uh, reconstruction of uh, the hazard mortality function. To do that, we, we use the uh, data of the human mortality database. This is incredibly important, uh, I think, it's, it's, uh, uh, database. Then we analyze more than 300 hazard function for male, uh, uh, 3,000 uh, other functions for female. We observe the data in 36 countries. Of course, all, a large part of this country has westernized or we can use the developed country. And, uh, and for, uh, for a window of a period that for the uh, longest uh, is for Sweden. Of, and, uh, the shortest one case is the Spain because uh, we have just data from in the mortality, human mortality database from the end, if I'm not wrong, uh, the end of the 19th, 19th century. Uh, uh, something like that. And then we observe, we study this only for age 150. Why we didn't consider age zero? We didn't consider age zero because from a mathematical point of view, it's going to complicate the, to find the right uh, smoothing uh, 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 function. Then, this is also more complicated from a mathematical point of view. Then, age zero, uh, we have a lot of a problem concerned to the quality of the data, especially in the past. If, uh, if, it is sufficient if we speak about or we think about the, the um, I would, not immorti, uh, steel bears and the different concept of steel bears. Then age zero depends by a lot of effect. Especially if you think about the Princeton table, the, the different mobile, model, north, south, west, are concerned especially the the level of infant mortality, and then the level of infant mortality depends by a lo lot of things, from a uh, socioeconomic uh, level of the country, about uh, uh, culture. Uh, 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 for example, the duration of breastfeeding, the quality of uh, environment, and so on. So we decided to move from ETA 1 to 50. What we did is, this is the simple, simplified representation that the method that we use. We, for each country, we, we took a period of 20 years, and then that year by year we move one year, and then we try to, to use a, with a cubic by spline a method to try to reconstitute the, this uh, function. At the end, we, for each country and for each period, we design a function. 
And then we obtain a lot of functions uh, to our, uh, this bootstrap method. And then we try to classify what we observe. At the end, what do we observe? We observe four kinds of shape for all these counts. Model or type T1, typical uh, among uh, women, which is characterized just by three critical points, what we call three critical points. One minimum, just one first inflection, and then on a second inflection. Type 2, this is typical for male, that we have almost the same uh, three point, then one maximum, another inflation, then a local mis minimum. At the, that part that uh, you can see that around 15 to 25 is the famous mortality hump, the that we see more for male than female. Then also we find other two kind, type three and type four, only for women. That are in some way we can say that are some derivation, some close or linked to the first two, two model. And in the first case, type three, we again, we observe again just three point. And the first minimum, first inflation, a second inflation, but with less evident and more, and with this point as are much delayed. Then, or again, type four, only for women, with again, with five critical point, much delayed than for model type, type two, and with the mortality amp, if we can call mortality amp, less evident. Another th important thing that we observe that these models are a clear distribution in the time, or along the year. And uh, this graph gave you a, a simple re uh, synthesis of this distribution on the X axis you have the period, and then you can see that for female, after the Second World War, uh, we observe uh, just two types, type one and type two. Instead, before the First, uh, uh, the first World War, we observe almost, all, uh, almost always the type three and four. Uh, please don't take in consideration the first bar, that this that is contain just three or two countries, Sweden and I don't remember England maybe England. I'm not sure if England. So it represent no uh, little. There is just one kind. For male, uh, we don't have or, um, or with, uh, with some exception. That we have just two types: type two and type one, with a more prevalence. Uh, Type two is more frequent, and type two is with uh, the model with the mortality amp, and also the proportion along this period is not so uh, variated. So we observe four types that in, with a different uh, periodization. What we did, uh, we try to give an explanation about the first about the type three and four that they are the typical for women, also for women, and just for the past. And uh, we did a lot of simulation, and we think that these uh, type three and four are some uh, modification of the classical one, type one and type two, according in the past for the level of fertility, the height level of uh, maternal mortality, and also according to the model, uh, nuptiality model. And type three, type four for us is evident, more evident, that we did uh, a lot of uh, simulation to, to understand better this. When uh, we have a delayed age at the first marriage, a strong uh, maternal mortality, this is typical, for example, of uh, Italy, is part uh, of Italy, and then a, a fertility that decline immediately when the women reach the maximum age, 
when you don't have a clear stop or, or the beginning of something that we can call controlled fertility. This, the result of this, this effort go to obscure what we observed in the classical mortality amp and move the mortality amp later and not so evident. The genesis of a type three is uh, for us depend when we have anticipated age at first marriage. Maternal mortality that is high, but not so high or, or so concentrated as in the, in the other kind of reproductive model. Because of course, when you start before, you, you normally you stop more the, the fertility. And so, so at the end, this can produce uh, uh, the model three. Of course, the, this is our idea, but we, we indirectly we can say that maybe the hypothesis is not so wrong, so wrong because type T, three or four we observed only for women. Then we observed this type three or four only when fertility and maternal mortality were higher and then they disappear. When maternal mortality and fertility, they start to be low in, uh, especially after the Second World War. At this point, we concentrate our attention on the two dominant models, type one and type two. And especially, we uh, try to find the explanation, different explanation for the first, uh, first two, three critical points, and then to uh, the points that uh, concern the adolescent or, or, bet, or better, the young, adult age. For the first two critical points, we observe uh, several things. First, that the, this minimum move from higher age to lower age, moving from 18th century to actual uh, period, especially for male and for female one. Then there is a fourth co a strong coincidence with the, what we call the beginning of a puberty. It's not our idea that there is a lot of biodemographic research that say that the minimum of mortality is linked with the beginning of a puberty. And also puberty move from higher age to lower age, from moving from the past to the present population. And then the first uh, uh, inflection point is strictly linked with uh, what we can call the end of a puberty. So uh, maybe I'm, go, <laughs> uh, I'm going to, uh, to do some strong assumption, but just to be more clear, to be clear that we link these two first with things that are strictly linked with what happened with the beginning of the puberty and so on. And the, the, this movement seems coherent on, on what happened, especially for female, that we have more, uh, more um, historical data. For example, um, also for Spain, I saw that there is a lot of research on the beginning of age at Menarche because it's easier to measure, and age at Menarch move from age that in the, for, I know better Italy, that was around the 13 age to age that is lower than 10, 9, 8 right now. So it, it, there is a strong coherence. This. Then, we, if we observe the second group of inflection point, I mean, uh, that are more evident for male than female. And is, this is the typical uh, uh, shape of mortality amp. We have the idea that the, uh, this, uh, the present of this point, especially the maximum, relative maximum and the relative minimum, are strictly linked with the theory of or better than theory, with the evidence of the, the testo, testosterone. That testosterone reached the maximum around age 20, 22, 23, 
then is going to not to decline, to, but to stabilize and then to little by little to decline around the age uh, 30, uh, 25, 27, and so on. And also testosterone move from uh, higher age in the past to lower age in the actual uh, population. Uh, then this is the theory, of course, also of Goldstein, a criticized. There are a lot of critics on the, the theory of that in the recent paper of Goldstein that he tried to explain what also uh, he studied a lot on the mortality amp. But, uh, and on the other point is interesting, the, the link that we can say that with the, the, the maximum of testosterone, we also serve what from a bio, biologic and demo, biodemographic uh, point of view we call the, the start of aging. So th there is something that is really comp complex that we have to, to, in some way, to reconnect of this uh, different approach or, or uh, different explanation. What is for us, and we think that maybe is the most original things that we discover clearly, is what I'm going to show in this uh, slide, a clear left movement of the, the mortality function. All the critical point, I mean minimum, first inflation, maximum where, especially we find them for uh, male, the second inflation and so on, and the, also the second relative minimum, move from higher age to lower age in all the population that we study, or that for the population that we have data. This is more evident in this table that try to summarize the, uh, the result. These are the, the data that, for example, minimum for male move from age that something that is 13 to right now age that is less than 10 or for female, uh, little, some years uh, before, and so on. So this, uh, for us, is one maybe of uh, our most integrating result. Uh, w uh, no, we call this uh, that in the past we observe uh, uh, in the fun mortality function two important change. One is that the classical uh, movement from the top to the bottom of all the the function of MAs, I mean the decline, uh, and the other, this movement from right to, to left. And this is also very uh, interesting if uh, we are able, and uh, now, right now, we are trying to find a function that is able to describe uh, this kind of a movement, because if uh, we are able to, to, to do that, we can also correct or have uh, a lot of measure and to understand better what happened and to try uh, to do this. Then another pass or another idea that we have, of course I gave you an idea that maybe there is puberty, testosterone, I mean young sport, what we call the, uh, and so on. Then how we can link do these two important chain, maybe is uh, uh, link with the uh, increase in net nutrition and also so the stronger link that we have with the outcome of a calorie restriction. Uh, the influence of net nutrition is clear. Uh, the most uh, evident example came from Fugel, according to Times when they started the, the the uh, increase of the stature and then stop, and, the, and the, it's clear the link of the, with the um, nutrition. The same we have for human population also for the past, st uh, uh, strong evidence of a strong link between the body mass index and uh, net nutrition, and another pass is body mass index and stature with the beginning at the end of puberty and the maximum of testosterone. We have a lot, but the, more, the most evident uh, proof, we of, of course, we have, it came from lab, 
design experiment that are not conducted, unfortunately, or fortunately, we can say, with the human population, but with animals. And we have uh, the classical example that uh, uh, a lot of study that uh, you have a, a group of uh, mice that uh, you don't feed, uh, the group that you feed, uh, you immediately see the incredible change in the beginning of uh, puberty or what uh, they call, we can call, but it's not the testosterone, my, my uh, sexual reproduction completely in the, for the animals. And then other evidence we have from some Amazonian population or some African non-westernized population. So we, we have uh, some uh, this uh, one in India. Of course, uh, maybe other process uh, work under. One of these is the uh, selection. Of, of, we use uh, one thing, we use uh, data, uh, temporal data, because of course, otherwise, if uh, we use a court cell the data, we are working on court data, we lost, uh, lost a lot of information, because at the least, we. We lost all the uh, last uh, uh, 20, 40 years. So we, we, but the results are not so different for the past with the court, uh, with the court approach. What I am saying with the, the court selection that right now, now, almost all the birds arrive to age 50. In the past, at age 50, arrived less than half of the bird. So who arrive now at, uh, at this age and then pass all this part of the, the curve of life uh, englobe a lot of a weaker population. So can change the level, of course, of, uh, in the, this critical point. There is some fact. We don't have clear evidence. But of course, we cannot refuse the idea that there is a sort of a selection, especially if we think that to the hypothesis of Vopel, that they say that in the last age uh, there are just one for, two forces, and one of these is the selection, who arrive at that, that age. And the same we can say if I'm studying for the past age 20, at age 20 for Italy, uh, almost the 40% percent, percent of the birth doesn't reach age 40. So the, these, uh, we, we need more study, we need more research, and we, we hope that uh, other scholars start to study this problem. Just to do a synthesis, we, we, what we, we did, we identified new fissures of the human adult cancer, such as the existence of two inflation points never identified, now it's a little strong, never identified, maybe it's better to say never measure, never, never clear uh, identified from a mathematical point of view. Then uh, we identify four recurrent types of mortality as a function. These are things that is uh, uh, something of uh, interesting because normally we think that there is just one shape or two shape, and then we found this uh, historical anticipation that uh, if you observe uh, compare some historical curve, you can observe. In fact, if I show you the first graph that uh, I present for Spain, you immediately observe this fact. This movement is evident. Now. But this is not typically of Spain, Italy, and so on. It seems to come to all the, all the mortality function. This is what we are doing. I don't know if it is, I give you some idea what, of, of the kind of the research that we are doing at our department. Thank you for your patience.